to Jim Morrison, live right here in Clearwater, Florida. Well, today we're going to meet the artist who painted his portrait on the door to his house right here in Clearwater. So stay tuned. I'm Vince Churka, your man on the music scene for Tampa Bay Music News. And we're back here at All Access Recording with artist and musician Joe Sanders. Joe, welcome. All right. Thank you very much for having me. So we have one of your paintings uh, on display here that uh, uh, I love. The colors pop. I mean, it, it, it's beautiful. I love the choice in colors. Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, it's a painting I did a few years ago. Um, uh, oil on canvas, oil and charcoal on canvas. Um, I did a, a series of these uh, new kind of biomorphic paintings or whatever you call them, faceless, bodies in motion paintings. Probably did eight to ten of them. Uh, for a show I did at Ruth Eckert Hall. What do you love more, painting, music? Do you have a preference? No, I, I love them both equally, you know, but I mean, I've been playing music, you know, the longest, you know. Um, I've only been painting for about uh, 12 years, and I've been painting and playing guitar for 35 years. Right. So, Joe, I read an article where you had uh, painted a portrait of Jim Morrison on a, a door to his house. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I tell did. me about that. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine, Rich Green, owns a door that was, uh, I believe it was uh, one of the two kitchen doors. Um, and he asked me if I'd paint uh, some door stuff on it. This is two, a door that was actually on Jim Morrison's house yep. here in Clearwater, Florida. Here in Clearwater. I believe it was in his grandparents' house that he mm -hmm. stayed at when he went to college here. Um, and uh, he wanted, uh, the, the, the person that owned the door wanted to be called Soul Kitchen, the door. Okay. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Just let me, let me do my thing. Right. You know? So I painted one side of it. It has this, you know, that light oily effect from the San Francisco light shows way back in the day. Right. And then some silk screens like Andy Warhol. And it was the rise and fall of Jim Morrison. Like he's really young at the top. And then on the bottom, he's fat and bearded and laying on the stage. And nice. You know. heard that you were scouted by the Red Hot Chili Peppers to play with them. Um, you know, how'd that come about? Well, that came about, um, I think, around the same time I was in. Uh, right before I joined Free Tool. That's how Phil found out about me. Because he loved the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But somehow they had found out about me and I got a phone call from their road manager. Uh, I think he had an English accent. His name was Greer, I think. Okay. Called me. I didn't believe him. I hung up the phone. I thought it was one of my friends <laughs> playing a joke on me. You know, hung up the phone and he called back there. He's like, nah, mate, this is for real. Oh, so I, I, I talked to the guy and I then ended up believing him. And I was like, okay, this is for real. And uh, they flew me out to California. And I ended up auditioning for him. I stood out there for nine days, had the time of my life. Right. And uh, uh, Dave Navarro was there, yeah. uh, who ended up playing the gig. Jesse Tabiris was the other guitar player. From, mm -hmm. he, ended up, uh, he was from Mother Tongue, but ended up in the Alanis Moore set. And myself. And it was a pretty quick audition, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys have nothing on you, by the way. I've seen uh, right, you play. Right, 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 right. Uh, no, nah, I'm too kind. Uh, but uh, Dave ended up getting the gig. It was. Um, but it was a great time. It was all about the experience. I was happy to be there. I couldn't believe I was there. And I learned what real talkers were well about. <laughs> We're here today in all access recording to uh, record an all instrumental album. Is that right? That's true. We're recording our second record. Okay. So tell me a little bit about Umber Luna. I mean, you know, what influences did you have forming this band? Well, Led Zeppelin definitely weaves its way through every everything that I do. Uh, but also, this, this, this band was formed on like the basis of Jeff Beck, Eric Johnson, Miles Davis, Electric Very Miles, nice. you know, yeah. uh, 70 through 76. Just that improvisational, but just also rock and roll. Joe, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, we'll certainly look forward to seeing Umber Luna out there soon. I'm Vince Churka, your man on the music scene for Tampa Bay Music News. Until next time, keep music in your mind and love in your hearts. Thanks, Vince.